Hello everyone. Over the course of more than 2000 years in the history of the church, hundreds of thousands of people have shed blood for their faith. In some parts of the world, Christians are put to death for their faith every day. A study in May 2015 reported that every five minutes a Christian is killed for his Christian faith. This means that around 100,000 Christians are killed around the world solely because of their faith. This estimate does not include those who are tortured, imprisoned, exiled, threatened, attacked and discriminated against. Some of those who have been killed are venerated as martyrs of faith. The Church remembers and celebrates their martyrdom on different days during the liturgical year. Yesterday, on July 24th, the Church celebrated the feast of St. James, the son of Zebedee and brother of St. John the Evangelist. James was the first of the Apostles to be martyred for his faith in Jesus Christ. However, hundreds of thousands of others who have been or are killed for their faith in Jesus have gone or go unnoticed by the rest of the church except perhaps in the land of the martyr. Let me tell you a story. In Pakistan, there was a man named Tahir Iqbal. He was born a Muslim and a paraplegic a man paralyzed from the waist down. As you may know, Islam is recognized as the country's official and dominant religion in Pakistan. Even though the country follows the policy of religious toleration, there have been countless stories of persecutions against Christians. Tahir converted to Christianity after reading the Bible he had received from a friend. After his conversion, he began to share his faith and the scriptures with others, especially the children in his village. In December 1990, Tahir was accused of committing blasphemy and was sentenced to death by hanging. Prior to his execution in 1993, Tahir confessed his faith in Jesus Christ, saying, I changed my faith because I found the truth. I will kiss the rope that hangs me, but I will never deny my faith. I repeat, I changed my faith because I found the truth. I will kiss the rope that hangs me, but I will never deny my faith. Friends, many of us may not have such a faith. I believe that Tahir is one of the Christians who truly follow the instruction of Paul in his letter to the Ephesians, which we read today. Paul urged the Ephesian Christians to live a life worthy of the call they had received. The call here refers to being a believer in Christ Jesus or being a Christian. There is no doubt Tahir Iqbal St. Paul, St. James and all the other martyrs saw life beyond the threats to their own lives and whose lives have become a testimony of a life worthy of the Christian call. Friends, Paul begins his instruction by drawing the Ephesians' attention to the fact that he is a prisoner. He says, I a prisoner for the Lord urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received. In other words, Paul wanted the Ephesians to know that it is worth being imprisoned, worth suffering and worth dying for the Christian call. So, what is the call of Christians? Paul explains in the same letter, chapter 1, verse 4, Thus he that is God, chose us in Christ before the world was made, to be holy and faultless before Him. Friends, there are two things to keep in mind here. One, the Christian call is from God. 
Jesus affirms the call of God in the Gospel of John chapter 15 verse 16. You did not choose me, no, I chose you. 2. The purpose of the call is to be holy people. To be holy means to be set apart. That is to say, God has set Christians apart like he did with the Israel, his chosen people, to keep the covenant and ultimately be the agents of light, peace and healing for the rest of the world. As the prophet Isaiah foretells, and as Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. You are the salt for the earth. You are the light for the world. Friends, however, God's calling, when accepted, demands sacrifices which includes self-renunciation, which is renunciation of one's own interest in favor of the interest of others. In today's text, Paul briefly and clearly expresses in his own words what self-renunciation entails. He says, Live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Friends, Paul encouraged the Ephesian Christians to exhibit humility, gentleness, patience, enduring love and the bond of peace. That is to say, they were to renounce pride, avoid harshness, resist impatience, shun hatred and combat disunity. Friends, Christ himself displayed these five qualities throughout his entire earthly ministry and called his followers to follow him. In the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verse 35, we read Jesus saying to his disciples, It is by your love for one another that everyone will recognize you as my disciples. Friends, our characteristics, our qualities are not innate. No one is born with them. For instance, we are not born honest or liars. But we become so by repeatedly telling the truth or be repeatedly lying. But we can embrace good characteristics through faith. We believe that without our faith in God, we cannot possibly achieve all these qualities, humility, gentleness, patience, enduring love and peace. That is to say, what we believe is important, because our beliefs show us the way we live, the choices we make and how we see the world and God. So Paul points out, there is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. In other words, Paul called on the Ephesian Christian to believe in one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. However, Believing the right things alone will not transform your Christian's life, but rather the Christian's life must also be characterized by humility, gentleness, patience, enduring love and peace. Otherwise, his or her beliefs are meaningless. Friends, Paul's admonition to live in a manner worthy of the call they had received was not only for the efficient Christians who had genuinely confessed their faith in Jesus Christ, and who are committed to following him, but also to others who have been called to follow Christ, such as ourselves. Even though all Christians are called to be martyrs, not just anyone gets a chance to become a martyr. Most of us are called to be simple Christian mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters and friends. That being so, I would like to pose the following questions to you today. Are you living in a manner worthy of your call? Are you a good Christian mom, dad, brother, sister or friend? 
Is there anything unchristian in your daily life? Do you observe these Christ-like qualities in you? So people might see them and recognize you as Christ's disciples. Do you truly believe in the oneness of the church that consists of one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism and one God? Friends, humility, gentleness, patience, enduring love and peace are not the strongest qualities in many of us. Oftentimes we want others to treat us with these qualities, but we may not be motivated to cultivate these traits in our lives. Friends, let us spend some more time in prayer today, thanking God for His wonderful calling that we have received from Him. Let us ask God to help us in our commitment to live our lives that are worthy of our calling. Lives that manifest humility, gentleness, patience, love and peace. Amen. God bless you.